Hey everyone, well the adventure continues. Here we are at the pool at the end of Bay Fin, and I decided to tackle, well you know about the problems we've been having with this Lair motor. Now, a couple things here. They've sent me a new carburetor. This is the new carburetor they've sent me. And they also sent me some gaskets to put on there. And uh, we're gonna try to do that. Now they also sent me a new starter, because as you know, this piece is broken right out of here. But as I took the lid off today, we just had this piece replaced last year. This is the feed for the propane. And if you look closely, you can see all the cracks already in this hose. So this hose, maybe just over a year old. This motor we've ran not even, maybe half a dozen times, maybe eight times. And we've burned through eight small tanks of propane with it. And uh, it's, uh, you know, people have been joking that LAIR stands for low energy and hardly runs. Um, at this point, I think, uh, like I, I've said in previous videos, that this was the biggest mistake we've made. But uh, we're still going to work with it because we've, unfortunately, you know, we're sailors. We've put, a, we've put a lot of money into this thing. So I am going to try to replace the carburetor today. So we've got a 5.8 bolt. It looks like we've got some 6 millimeter Allen keys here. And I'll update you as I get into this project. Okay, this has been fairly simple so far. This 5.8 uh, uh, nut came out here, no problem. These turned out to be 5 millimeter uh, Allen keys. So I'm not 100% sure why we have a mixture of uh, standard and metric on this thing. Looks like this is just going to pull out. I don't want to lose any parts in the lake. Um, so I'm going to be very careful here. And uh, I'm going to be able to pull this out. I'll just rest that there for now. And then it looks like, eh, quite simply, and then here we have, looks like your control cable. So we'll pull this out. And I'll update you. I'll need two hands for this, so I'll update you in a couple minutes as we try to put the new one in. There, it's playing. All right. Okay, so to get this thing out here, it's a little tricky. you got to take the pressure off the spring. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but there's a little brass plug there. You take the pressure off the spring and it'll just fall out. So be careful you don't lose that part. All right, and now this now will just come out like this. Okay, so after taking this thing apart, we can see there's something going on here because there's definitely some sort of leakage out of this gasket here. For an engine with so few hours uh, on it, I think this really shows the, the build quality of this thing. And I, you know, I don't want to complain too much um, about the support because I never actually took it back to where I purchased it because I know they're good people. Um, but I feel that, uh, you know, for a sailor that's going out, uh, we can't be running back to our local marine store every 10 minutes. So, especially when it's five hours away. So I put the new piece on. It was just a matter of pushing in the control end, uh, pushing it against the spring there, and then dropping that little brass piece in. Working over water, that's going to be really hard. Uh, it, could, it was really tricky. Uh, it could be really tricky. Um, so I would suggest, you know, putting in something just in case you do drop that piece so you don't drop it in the lake. Uh, but honestly, this should be done on the bench somewhere. All right, and now we're going to put the new carb and the new gaskets in. Um, looking at everything looks clean, which is, which is good. We have a new gasket for here. We have a new gasket for the bottom of the, I'll, I'll use it in, uh, in quotes, carburetor. And I actually call carburetors in propane systems. I remember when I used to work on tow motors that were propane. There's another name for them. Um, so, but Lair calls it their carburetor. So we'll go with that. All right, and I'll update you in a minute. So, so far we've, we've got it back together. We haven't fully tightened these up yet. We did put this in, we found out that the threads in the new carb were not super clean, so we had to take it apart because the bolt was jamming when it went in because, well, just poor machining. Uh, it's just this magnesium white metal casting stuff. So uh, we didn't want to strip it, so we took it apart, cleaned it, and we put that back in. 
and there's two gaskets, make sure there. There's a gasket here on the bottom, a gasket on, in between here. They did come with the replacement carburetor, so we've also put those in. Just made sure everything clean. We, again, we haven't tightened these down yet. I'll be doing that in a second. This, of course, your needle valve goes in here. And that's that little brass thing. You don't want to lose that. And it'll go in, and then we'll tighten this. Now, Lair did not send any instructions on how to adjust your throttle and your carb, which is done via this little screw setting here. So we're going to set it somewhere in the middle now. On our old motor, when we got it, it was almost turned all the way out, which leads me to believe that there was something wrong. I am not a propane expert. I am just a guy trying to keep my motor going and trying to help other people who may have made the mistake of buying this and they got a lemon like I did. I got to assume that some of these motors are good. I just got a, a bad one. Okay, I'm going to tighten everything up, throw some... Uh, propane on it. Like I said, folks, that hose needs to be replaced. So I really shouldn't be using this one, but I don't have a spare, so I've got to do that. I'm going to tighten everything up, get it in the water, and see if we can get her idling better than she was. Talk to you later. Okay, folks, well, we've got the motor back on the dinghy, and we've installed a fresh can of propane here. And as you can see, and this is just a bad design, and I hope the camera picks this up, but the way this hose comes around here, look at this, it, it, it's going to crack, and look at the cracks in it. Now, this is a propane system, and uh, Jesus, it, look, I, I get it, some people have had great success with these motors, uh, me not, and several other people I know have not. Um, I think the idea behind only having two fuel sources on the boat, in our case, propane and diesel, uh, we use propane for cooking in our barbecue, and then we have diesel for our auxiliary. Um, it, it makes sense just to have our two fuel sources. Um, however, I just don't know. I just, you know, um, I have friends that all have gas motors. They're so quiet. And I think I'm actually going to change my the moniker because I didn't come up with that one. But I think Lair is now going to stand for loud, expensive, and hardly runs. So um, I think that's what we're going to go with until I actually see this thing functioning. Now, my next project is going to be to fix this. So anyway, let's continue on with the car uh, carb problem. But um, as you can see, I've had to pretty much go to the end of the threads again to get this thing to idle. Uh, it, um, I'm going to start it. It is going to get noisy. And uh, you can see I just use a, a little 5 16 wrench here uh, um, to loosen this off. And then we can adjust this screw. And this is, this is sort of your idle screw. And what I've, since there's absolutely no instructions on how to run this thing, I'm guessing that this will be our idle point. So this is where you want to idle in neutral. So you put it in neutral. Neutral, your switch is inconveniently placed right here, but just make sure it's in neutral. And I've actually got this thing starting. From previous videos, you know the problems I've had. So put a little clip on here. Again, filming one-handed, so bear with me. Um, pull this out. I don't know, I, I need a little stand for this camera. Just um, bear with me one second. Camera between the knees, pull this out, clip that on. And the reason I want to do this in one shot is because you know, some people go, oh, he did something different. So I've set the throttle a little bit here, getting some gas. And I, if I pull with just with this, this thing wrecks my knuckles, so I got to pull both of these. This is the broken off part. All right. I have started this already once, and it did start. There we go. All right, so I got it back set to neutral. It is running a little warm. Um, and then we can adjust this here. The more I turn it out, the faster it goes. But I'm at the end of the threads here. I don't even see this, but I'm already at the end of the threads. So I'm just trying to make a, find a happy medium here. And then we'll just snug that nut in to see how it runs. Okay, so, we'll just that up. so this is neutral. Now let's put it into gear. I've got some room in this bay here to play. And well, it's running a lot better than it was before. Oh, there we go again. Uh, you gotta love these fucking pieces of shit. Uh, sorry, folks. Uh, 
I don't know, I don't know what, to, what to do with these things. So I'm going to turn this even more out. All right, try to get it to high, idle a little even, idle too high now. Problem is, if it idles too high, like when we got this motor, um, you can't slow down. You know, you're always trying to drift into places because you have to shut your motor off when you're 20 yards away from anything. So let's try again. I'll give it some gas here. Let's see if it'll start. Oh, that was me being stupid. Forgot to put it in neutral. Okay. That was that was not that was not Lara's fault. That was entirely mine. Here we go. You know, the problem I have now is all right. Here we go. Okay, not bad. Not too bad. We're actually cruising along here. Seems to be running. We want to go back to our boat here, so let's take it back into its slow speed. And now we've got it down here. It is idling now. But as you can see, I'm at the very maximum on these threads. And this is on a new power base engine. You can't... Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's just barely keeping going. I am going to keep adjusting this, so here we go again. Oh, folks, this is what you get. <sighs> Let's do this. Well, once again, put it back in neutral. You know what? I've ruined way too many of my days of uh, vacation trying to fix this frigging thing. Um, there's just no point. Folks, if, if you've bought one, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll update you if I ever figure out a fix for this damn thing. Have a good day. Bye. Well, we've tried adjusting this now into almost every spot. Try, try to get it to run and not stall. Um, my my immediate thought is it's just as bad now as it was. Um, I'm gonna try it out again, and then I'm almost at the end of those threads uh, to see what'll happen. Uh, honestly, I'm getting sore, and this broken piece wrapping against my. Wrist has been killing me trying to start this damn thing, but uh, we'll give it another try. One, two. Put it in here, give it some gas. Folks, just don't buy these pieces of shit. Um, you know, I don't know what this thing cost me. 15, 1600 bucks. It's not a cheap motor. I have spent more days and more frustration. Um, we're to the point where we row most of the time. So I guess if you're talking environmentally friendly, it is environmentally friendly because the thing doesn't run, so you're forced to row, and rowing is the most environmentally friendly option. Um, you know, I'm just going to keep making these videos about this absolute piece of junk until Lara comes along and says, you know what, you're right, we need to improve our product. And uh, it's not just me that's having trouble out there. There are dozens of people who email me all the time about this. So let's keep, um, uh, I'm going to keep going. If I find a fix, I tell you, I'll, 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 I'll post it here. But uh, it was definitely not the carburetor that was the, the problem. It's something else. All right.